Welcome back to Bad Things in History, where we offer escape from the horrors of daily life into other horrors of daily life. There have been many forms of government throughout human history. Monarchies, democracies, and totalitarian regimes are a few of the more common ones. In the 20th century, communism was added to this list. Whatever the supposed virtues of communism might be, in practice it wasn't incredibly fun. The people who lived in these countries escaped when they could. Many of them died during the attempt. One of the worst places to live was East Germany. Today we are going to explore the stories of several people who tried to escape from communist oppression. East Germany Germany was a single unified country until the end of World War II. After it surrendered, the Allies began dividing it into districts. Berlin, the capital city, was eventually broken into four sectors. The United States oversaw one part of the city, the British had another, and the French also had a sector. The east part of Berlin and most of East Germany belonged to the Soviets. Joseph Stalin was in control of the Soviet government. He did not like having the United States and Britain in control of West Germany. He wasn't willing to start a war over it, but Stalin was more than happy to make life difficult for those occupying West Germany. On June 24, 1948, Soviet forces blocked access to Western-controlled parts of Berlin. They stopped railroads from running, blockaded roads, and placed guards along canals. Joseph Stalin said he would lift the blockade if Allies removed the Deutsche Mark from circulation. He considered the newly introduced currency to be a threat. The Cold War had officially begun. And in this first exchange, the Allies would be victorious. The United States and Britain began the Berlin Airlift. They bypassed the Soviet blockade by flying thousands of cargo planes over West Berlin. Supplies were dropped directly into the city. This continued until September 30th, 1949. Stalin, unable to stop the flow of supplies, finally relented and lifted the blockade. In October 1949, the political line between East and West Germany was finally settled. The German Democratic Republic was established in the East. Although the new country had elections, it wasn't very democratic. The ruling government was socialist and controlled every aspect of its citizens' lives. Socialist policies didn't allow for the free movement of capital or people, but controlling the population was a perplexing task. So, in 1950, East Germany created the Stasi. They were secret police who spied on citizens. Those they targeted were arrested, tortured, and sometimes killed. In addition to a repressive government, East Germany had to pay reparations to the Soviets. The result was that East German citizens lived in complete poverty. Many of them could see that life in West Germany was much more pleasant. Those who could do so tried to flee. At first, East German authorities had problems stopping the flow of refugees across the border. The city of Berlin had an imaginary line dividing East from West, but there were no physical barriers. In some cases, people could walk into a house in East Germany, then walk out the back door and find themselves in West Germany. On the night of August 12, 1961, soldiers began constructing the Berlin Wall. It would serve as a barrier to stop people from leaving East Germany. Additionally, soldiers were instructed to shoot people without warning if they were seen attempting escape. Some people would risk their lives to leave East Germany. Many would die trying. But some would succeed. The NBC Tunnels Reality television is not a recent invention. Executives were considering its virtues even as the threat of nuclear war was imminent. Soon after the Berlin Wall was constructed, people began trying to use tunnels to escape. American news networks really wanted to capture a tunnel escape on film. NBC and CBS were in direct competition with each other. 
each network wanted to be the first to accomplish this milestone. NBC decided it could move things in the right direction with proper financing. It financed a group of West German students. They planned to dig a tunnel into East Germany. NBC offered $160,000 for exclusive rights to film it. 29 people escaped through the tunnel before it was discovered. NBC took the video footage and created a documentary film called The Tunnel. It was originally scheduled to broadcast on October 31, 1962. Thanks to the Cuban Missile Crisis, NBC decided to postpone the premiere. Eventually, it was postponed indefinitely. In light of these tensions, Robert Kennedy was not amused. He reportedly said to NBC, That was a terrible thing you people did, buying that tunnel. Another tunnel created by students would result in 57 more people escaping into West Germany. The Stasi installed listening devices along the border to detect the sounds of people digging. It succeeded in preventing more tunnel escapes. Wolfgang Engels Some of those who escaped used very direct and dangerous methods to reach freedom. In 1963, Wolfgang Engels was a car mechanic and driver. He worked on East German army vehicles. He had also helped build the barbed wire that separated East Germany from West Germany. He did not enjoy life under a communist regime and wanted to move west. On April 17, 1963, he stole an armored personnel carrier from the military base where he worked. He waited until the rest of his crew went to lunch, then he climbed into the vehicle and drove away. As Wolfgang drove through the streets of West Berlin, the police didn't try to stop him. They thought he was with the army, so they actually stopped traffic at intersections until he passed. Wolfgang made one stop on his way to the Berlin Wall. He saw a group of young people walking and said to them, I'm going to the West. Does anyone want to go? They declined to join him, so he continued driving. When he arrived at the Berlin Wall, Wolfgang didn't slow down. He rammed it with the personnel carrier. But it wasn't strong enough to penetrate the wall. It stopped halfway through. Wolfgang jumped out of the vehicle and began running for the border. He was caught in barbed wire. While trying to remove himself from the trap, he was shot by East German guards twice. People on the west side of the border began pulling Wolfgang to safety. He was taken to a hospital and eventually recovered from the gunshot wounds. Wolfgang enjoyed living in West Germany, but his East German mother was a devout communist. She never forgave him for escaping. Balloon Escape Peter Stretzig was an engineer. Gunther Wetzel was a bricklayer. They worked at a plastics factory in East Germany. The two were friends, and they did not like living under a communist regime. Both men were married. Between them, they had four children. The two men wanted a better future for their families. They didn't see a chance of prosperity in East Germany. So, on March 7, 1978, they agreed to work together. The pair would devise a plan to escape into West Germany. They decided the path to freedom required building a hot air balloon, but... Neither of them knew anything about how to make one. It became a stressful learning experience. And failing the final exam could mean death. To make a balloon, they needed a lot of fabric. After searching many nearby towns, they found a place that had a large amount of cotton fabric. Peter and Gunther were worried about the Stasi being alerted, so they told the shopkeeper that it was being used for tents in their camping club. The men succeeded in buying everything they needed. They began constructing the balloon and finished it a few weeks later. In April 1978, they took the hastily constructed vessel to a forest clearing, but after multiple attempts, the fabric couldn't be inflated. The conspiring friends finally realized that using cotton to make a hot air balloon wouldn't work. Peter and Gunther did not give up. They began testing other materials and finally settled on using taffeta. It's a high-end fabric used in wedding dresses and ball gowns. 
In East Germany, finding the material was difficult, and purchasing it could arouse suspicion. They traveled to various towns and finally found the amount they needed at a department store. The men told the clerk they were part of a sailing club. They needed the material to make new sails. Having escaped suspicion for the second time, they took the fabric home and began making a new balloon. Peter and Gunther worked on it for several weeks. Finally, they had a hot air balloon that would fly. On July 3rd, 1979, they gathered their wives and children for the trip to West Germany. At 1.30 a.m., all eight passengers lifted off. They reached an altitude of 6,600 feet and were traveling with the wind into West Germany. However, ice formed on the balloon and added more weight. It slowly descended until it touched the ground. Unfortunately, the passengers landed 590 feet inside of East Germany. They were less than a mile from escape, but finishing the trip on foot was impossible. Peter and Gunther gathered their families and hiked back home before anyone realized they were missing. They had to leave the downed balloon behind. It was discovered by the Stasi, who began hunting for the people that built it. Peter and Gunther knew it was only a matter of time before they were discovered, so they decided to build one more balloon. They traveled to various towns buying the necessary fabric. A new balloon was built and ready to fly on September 5th, 1979. The passengers lifted off at 2 a.m. They flew for about 30 minutes and landed six miles inside West Germany. Peter and Gunther, along with their wives and children, were now safe. East Germany reacted by tracking purchases of propane and fabric to prevent the construction of more balloons. Also, Peter and Gunther's close relatives were arrested and sent to prison. Heinz Joseph Grosse Heinz Joseph was a construction worker in East Germany. On March 29, 1982, he was operating a backhoe. His job was to work on border fortifications. They would prevent more people from escaping communism. As he worked, Heinz Joseph noticed that the border guards were nowhere near him. Nobody was watching him at all. He decided to exploit the opportunity. In this area, the border into West Germany was protected by a fence. Heinz Joseph drove his backhoe into the fence. He then walked out onto the backhoe, then jumped over the fence. He began running for West Germany. A few feet before reaching his destination, he was spotted by East German guards. They began opening fire. Nine bullets struck their intended target and halted his progress. As Heinz Joseph Grosse slowly bled to death from his wounds, a West German patrol could do nothing but watch him die. The incident caused controversy in West Germany. It was not forgotten when the country finally reunified. In 1996, the guards who shot Heinz Joseph were put on trial. They were found guilty of homicide and given suspended sentences. The Last Escape Hans Peter Spitzer and his daughter Peggy would be the last people to escape East Germany in August 1989. Hans Peter was a teacher, and he did not like living in a communist society. He was required to teach lessons approved by the government. Observers were present in his classroom to ensure these lessons were taught correctly. Hans Peter sometimes spoke against these teachings, which put him on a watch list with the Stasi. The school where he worked had elections for union representatives. The elections were rigged, and those who voted knew that they better select the right candidate. Hans Peter decided to boycott the election. For this transgression, he was arrested and interrogated by the secret police. After being released, Hans Peter knew that he had to escape. He later described his state of mind. Living in the German Democratic Republic was like living in a big prison. Trying to escape was very dangerous, but we were desperate. I knew they could have shot at us. I could have been thrown in prison and my daughter placed in a state children's facility. My life and my daughter's were in danger. Foreign soldiers who visited East Germany were not searched in the same way civilians were. Hans Peter decided to approach these soldiers and ask for help. On the first day, he approached ten of them and they refused to assist. 
On the second day, he met an American soldier named Eric Yaw. Eric agreed to help. Eric placed Hans Peter and his daughter Peggy into the trunk of his car. Then he drove across the border. East German soldiers did not bother searching the vehicle. After emerging into West Germany, Hans Peter and his daughter Peggy were finally free. Eric was interrogated by the United States Army. He was reprimanded, but otherwise didn't face any repercussions. On November 9th, the Berlin Wall would be torn down and the policy of killing East German citizens for attempting to escape would end. By the end of 1990, Germany would be reunited as a single country. East Germany was a communist house of horrors that existed for a little more than 40 years. Despite the fact it used espionage, propaganda, and threats to keep citizens in line, thousands of them escaped. Many of them succeeded against overwhelming odds. If you lived under a repressive regime, would you try to escape? If so, where would you go? Let us know in the comments. This is the part where we say we have a Patreon page, and if you joined, it would mean a lot to us. And if you don't, that's okay. We still love you. Just not as much as the people who pay us. Thank you for watching Bad Things in History.